Bowman Baseball, though, uh, really a flagship release for baseball fans, uh, a huge release. Uh, what are your expectations going into this 2022 version uh, of Bowman Baseball coming up soon? Again, I think it, people are going to go crazy for it. Um, you're seeing that, especially now with um, a lot of other products. Um, like the pre-sale on Topps Chrome is insane right now. So I think that you're going to find that Bowman prices, I think, are going to be silly. And I say silly because as somebody who's been in this hobby a very long time, I'm still trying to get used to these new prices and like just where the prices of wax and the prices of unproven prospects are, you know, it's at times like I'm having a hard time, like reconciling these prices with what my mind knows these prices were once upon a time. Um, but I do think you're going to see it because of the value of first Bowman autograph cards. Yeah. Um, you see, you know, at Golden, we've had some pretty spectacular sales for these prospect cards. And, you know, it's for people who are okay hanging on to cards for a couple of years and like playing the long game, you know, they could be fruitful for them. So let's say you get, I'm a Yankees fan, so let's say you get a first Bowman card this year of Oswaldo Cabrera. Um, and he, in a couple of years, like he comes out and he ends up being like, you know, yeah, passes Anthony Bopi as like the next Yankee shortstop, or gets traded and goes to some other team right. like to be their shortstop. Like it, that's that's pretty incredible, you know. So you're gonna have these cards of these players who have like these high ceilings, um, and combine that with the potential of what they could become, and like these Bowman prices, I think are gonna be crazy. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I thought maybe, I mean, we don't have a checklist, I don't think, as of this recording. Uh, we don't have a checklist yet, um, but we do have at least some indication of some of the big prospects who will be in here. Um, from everything I've seen, I don't see Jack Leiter anywhere in this yeah. set, um, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, I was thinking, you know, when Bowman Draft came out, I thought, okay, they're going to obviously hold Jack Leiter. He is basically the next Steven Strasburg in terms of hype level among pitchers. Like he's the first pitcher in a long, long time that I think collectors are going to gravitate to. Um, so I, I found it a little interesting that uh, they held him back. And yet you said it, I think the hype level is still through the roof for this thing. Despite the fact that I think uh, when we look at the checklist, there's not going to be uh, a ton of those recognizable names. Uh, do you think that uh, this, this hype for this product is going to maybe uh, die out a little faster because we don't have, I mean, there's Khalil Watson, I know of the Marlins, uh, but maybe not as many of those big name prospects, uh, at least at first, uh, here on the checklist going for, or, or, or at the outset. Yeah, you know, Tops, they always hold back a little bit. You know, yeah. they don't release the entire checklist. I know there was a 2022 Bowman first edition checklist that is out, so it kind of gave a hint as to who's who should be appearing in 2022 Bowman. Um yeah, I think Jack Leiter is probably a big name. Like you're right. I mean, my husband is a Texas Rangers fan, so he he, he you know he's high on Jack Leiter. Yeah. Um, so that is a big name to be missing. But I also part of me also feels like gone are the sort of days are like like I'm trying to think how to word this, but like the prospects being like, do they have to be big anymore? Like, these cards go for so much money now. Like, in general, even if they're, like, a high prospect or, like, a mid mid-range prospect, like, I feel like, in general, their, their autograph cards, their first Bowman autographs, go for a decent amount of money. Um, having said that, this year, there is the sort of competing rookie class. You know, the, the rookie card, uh, you know, with, <laughs> I'm just, I always think of how to word this because of 2021 Bowman's best debacle. But it's like for, for the sake of this conversation, <laughs> I'll just call them rookie cards. Right. So because of the 2022 rookie cards, like there's a huge checklist for them this year that, you know, um, Topps Chrome could overshadow Bowman this year for sure. Um, yeah. But I do agree that like if Bowman, if Jack Leiter's not in Bowman Chrome, that's sad because, you know, you want to see you want the biggest names coming out of the draft coming into this product. And maybe they just didn't get a deal with him. And that's what the problem is right now. Like maybe he wanted too much money and they tops couldn't come to a deal that made sense for both sides of it. Yeah, that's a good point that uh, it's, yeah, it would be, a, it would be a bummer. Um, but I, I think you also mentioned it that with the, with the tops Chrome 
rookie class that we're getting. I think there's also a feeling from tops of like, well, hey, if Bowman's a little down this year, Chrome rookies are going to be through the roof. And then, you know, the update with pop, the potential of Bobby Witt and Spencer Torkelson, Julio Rodriguez. So uh, I think things will basically even out uh, for them as well. Uh, but yeah, they, initially I've been seeing also a lot of international prospects. I know the international signing period moved up this year. So that also kind of changes things where I think you're going to see a lot of different guys uh, that you wouldn't see, I think, in that first set of Bowman uh, in this set uh, that you maybe would have seen down the road after the summer uh, international signing period uh, as well. Uh, but let's let's get into a little bit of the history of Bowman. I want to talk about if when you think of Bowman, what is I mean, maybe maybe I'm swaying you with the, the shirt I'm wearing today. Uh, what's the most iconic card when you think of Bowman? What's the first card that pops into your head? It's mm, a good question. I mean, it's it's probably that 52 Bowman set. I mean, I like 51. I do think of 52. I think those cards are beautiful. Um, but for me personally, like, they're probably not the first ones that come to mind because I grew up collecting, you know, the Bowman cards. So maybe there's like 93 Bowman kind of sticks out to me. Is it 93 I'm, or 92? Maybe the one with Chipper Jones and Mary. Yeah. It's on 92 with Mariano and his like his rookie car, like the street clothing one. To oh, me, yeah. like that's kind of what like jumps to mind the first time I think of Bowman. Even though like obviously the vintage cards are beautiful, but um, those stick out to me is that that 92 set with all the street clothes because it's it's it was goofy and silly, <laughs> and different and and fun and. Um, you know, growing up, like when I'm first like diving into collecting, this this was like those were my years. You know, yeah. You know, it's funny because it's it is sort of like a if someone's like, what was the junk wax era like, and they could just show you a picture of Mariano Rivera wearing like a button up shirt and slacks, and it's like this is the kind of cars we have. But that was also the fun of it. Was like it was it was stuff like that where they just kind of threw stuff at the wall and said, let's see what works. Let's see what people like. Uh, personally, I'd love to see a comeback of the, uh, you know, the casual uh, look at, you know, the nice clothes or like, you know, going out on a Friday night look for the players. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we're past that uh, at this point. Players, people don't want to see them in some slacks or something like that. That's what I mean. Panini could do it. Yeah, it's true. I would love that. I mean, if we could get like relics of like Mariano Rivera's shirt, he's wearing in that in that uh, in like a panini card. I'd be all for it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Do you see the Bowman brand becoming? I mean, maybe not as successful in, in the other sports, but yeah, as we mentioned, they're they're reaching out to other sports. There. Uh, do you see it becoming as much of a chase in maybe say football, uh, you know, four or five years down the road, a first Bowman football card will be the equivalent or at least even be just a shade below a first Bowman baseball. Yeah, maybe because I mean, if you, if, if, if I'm, if I'm thinking about how I would use it and I have no idea, I have no insight into this whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but let's say for Bowman, I want to be able to, for football, I want to be able to utilize, put all these different players on cards, but like, for a Topps flagship or even like a Topps Chrome, you know, I have a very limited checklist. There's so many more football players than there are baseball players, um, even though baseball has a huge roster, even with their prospects. But if I want to put, to put more football players on cards, I could sort of relegate the younger players, guys who are like our backups and that kind of stuff into a Bowman product. And if they end up like, shining you know throughout the years and becoming like starters and good players you'll have these like very limited releases of cards because they were only in bowman products and maybe not as many tops products because you know you're putting the stars in the tops products whereas bowman was getting um you know like i said like reserves and backups and maybe rookies who may not be starting in year one kind of stuff yeah that's a great point i think that that's it, it kind of making bowman uh for uh, going forward, if you're going to do football, basically the same idea that I think what Panini has with like contenders football, where you're including guys who you, you're not just getting the QB autos, you're getting the tackles, the kickers, all that yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think that's that's probably sounds about right of where that where that would land uh, for Bowman. Uh, it's it's great to see. I, I love seeing that the Bowman brand is reaching out to other sports and we're seeing it in other sports. Uh, so we'll see if the, if the collecting community responds and, and if they, if they like that uh, things are going to be changing up with the Bowman brand, some first Bowman's that you weren't thinking about collecting uh, just not uh, just a few months ago, uh, before we move on to the next topic, uh, you, you wrote about it with uh, tops Chrome rookies. Uh, but I want to hear from you. What, uh, what does tops do here going forward with this rookie class? We're, I think until, 
we know exactly. We've, I feel like I've talked about it with almost everybody on the show so far, but until we know exactly how Tops is going to be divvying up this rookie class, uh, how do you expect them to do it? Are they going to just put all of the big rookies in the next big set? Are they going to kind of spread things out? Are we going to see maybe – uh, a, a Bobby Witt rookie in top 2023 tops. I can't imagine they'll do that, but uh, how do you think they're going to spread this out through the year? Yeah. I mean, the first indication is to look at what they're doing for their tops. Now cards, if there's an RC logo on their tops, now cards, they're going to be in as many 2022 products as, as humanly possible. Um, it's not until we see the tops now card saying call ups that you know that those players will be pushed into 2023. Like it's because it's not their rookie card. Um, so if a car, if a player like it, all the so far all the all the all the debut players have all had RC logos on their cards. So all of these players will appear in 2022 products at some point. Um, where we'll see them for the first time, like that's then the big question. Um, I think we'll see a bunch of them. I think. So he, he, here's how I break it down. I think anybody who was on the opening day roster will will find their way into Series 2. That's what I think. Okay. Um, I think anybody that was on the opening day roster and within the first sort of like 10 to 14 days of the, t- the team will find their way into Tops Chrome. And I think anybody that comes after that is more likely going in update and then Tops Chrome update for the sake of like, cause they have that product now. Um, so that's how I personally see it. Um, that's based on, and that's based on like how, when I previously worked at tops, how things were, were done. Um, and I feel, I feel pretty good about that and having, <laughs> having like sort of poked the waters <laughs> on that, the, poke the bear a little bit about trying to get information. Nobody's, right. nobody's confirmed anything to me, but I feel <laughs> good about it. I'll say that, but right. I think that's how it will break down personally. Okay. Well, that wow. Then, then Tops Chrome suddenly becomes. Uh, I mean, we alluded to it. Tops Chrome this year's becomes maybe one of the most coveted baseball sets we've seen in years. With I mean, already with Wander, and we're going to talk about him in just a little bit. But uh, just seeing what these guys are doing, uh, even Julio Rodriguez really coming around lately with Seattle's looking good. Uh, man, oh man, I, you, you get why these pre-orders are just going through. The yeah, right I mean, now. I get it. It's but it's crazy. But it's crazy. Like honestly, yeah. like so. While I think these people, these players, will appear in Tops Chrome, um, I don't think that they're going to be at like an unlimited quantity. I think that you know collectors are really going to be like, yes, yes, let's get this, and then you're going to open product and be like, cool, I have a middle reliever that has pitched three games last year. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's not to say like all of them are going to be that way, but like because there's a balance. Like the like the Tortelsons and the Rodriguez and the Bobby Woods of the world, they're not cheap autographs for tops. You know, these the the agents know the value of these players. They're not, and because of how crazy cards are, they know the value of their cards so you know conceivably if you have a very good agent and i'm sure a lot of these guys do if you know the value of your card is two hundred dollars let's say why would i say yeah give me five bucks per autograph they're not gonna they're not gonna do that they're gonna say look my these cards are valued at this much money so we deserve to have this much money because like we know you still need to make money we all we're all in this together mm-hmm. so these che- these autographs are not going to cheap can be cheap for these players so they're not going to be plentiful either in my opinion mm-hmm. again never talked to anybody about this this is just my opinion on the matter but i i just feel like while the prices will be crazy which they already are on pre-orders i just also want collectors to be um knowledgeable and just sort of have um, real expectations of going into it when they are opening product. Yeah, and maybe I think that was... Maybe every box has a Wit Rodriguez or... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can, only, we can only dream of such a thing happening. Hey, thanks for checking out this clip of Wax Packs and Warning Tracks, Mojo Breaks Baseball Card Podcast. If you want to check out the entire audio version, make sure to follow the link in the description below, or better yet, subscribe to the podcast search for Mojo Break Sports Card Show. That's Mojo Break Sports Card Show wherever you listen to podcasts. New episodes drop every Tuesday and the hype. New episodes of that drop on the same feed every Thursday. Two for one. Who doesn't love that? Get both podcasts, subscribe wherever you listen to them, and of course, make sure to subscribe to Mojo Break Media here on YouTube. Like the video. We've got more great content about trading cards, sports cards, the hobby, and much, much more.